Hey guys, I'm in a restaurant in Mexico City, but right now I want to say a quick thank you to our sponsor of this video, Kamikoto. If you're looking for the highest quality knife for your kitchen, Kamikoto knives are made from Japanese steel sourced from Honshu Island and using traditional Japanese techniques. These knives are not only perfectly presented in a beautiful heavy-duty ashwood box, but you can feel how well-crafted they are as soon as you pick them up. Balanced, weighted, and before hitting the market, each knife is individually inspected. And Kamikoto also has sharpening whetstones, so you never have to worry about dull blades. Kamikoto is so confident with their knives that each comes with a lifetime guarantee, which must be why they're trusted by chefs in Michelin star restaurants around the world. And as you might have guessed, I've got some good news. Kamikoto has a huge sale going on. They're offering our besties an extra $50 off any purchase with the code BEFRS. So whether you're looking to up your cooking game or whether you need the perfect present for your culinarily gifted friend, a set of Kamikoto kitchen knives is sure to impress. Now, on to the show. My guess is that people saw it, they're like, oh, okay, nice thin strips of beef. They ate it, they thought it was delicious. And then when you told them it was tongue, what happened? Uh, in this great land, too often, would-be diners are hung up on the same old proteins oh my God. and same old cuts. It's so goofy. Anything new, anything different, is immediately labeled as weird and dismissed by most. While one restaurant here in Texas doesn't give a f about that. If it offends some people or people aren't interested in it, um... Today, I'm dining on a one-of-a-kind meat feast. Uh-oh. Few restaurants would be brave enough to serve in this country. Between the ear and the eye, it's probably the best part. Really? Oh. It all starts here in Dallas. Well, good morning, Molly. Good morning, Sunny. Joining my food adventure today, Molly. When did you get started with food? She's the boss of several food operations, fueled by her passion for using traditional ingredients in untraditional ways. I have been cooking since I could walk. Sounds <laughs> dangerous, actually. <laughs> We're forming our own Dallas Buyers Club, and I'm in the market for some face meat. Today, we're going to a special restaurant called CBD Provisions. In the heart of this modern metropolis lies the Jewel Hotel. Inside, CBD Provisions, a restaurant where you can experience high-end that's gone off the deep end. Here they have a menu item so mysterious that you have to order it two days in advance. Awesome. Are you ready? Let's do this. Let's do it. Connor? Put her there. How's it going? Meet Connor. He's the culinary director of five different restaurants, including CBD Provisions. CBD is a Texas brasserie. As far as the technique, it's very French influenced, or now I guess they would call it progressive American cuisine. But it's not super fussy. It's a humble plate of food with a wink and a nod. And perhaps a little bit of a twist? A little bit of a twist. The menu here is a celebration of traditional Texan cuisine. But what we're trying today, you won't find just anywhere. I don't actually know the proper name, and you can tell me now, but I've been calling it fried pig face. Yeah. It's not really, f I mean. Yes, you're looking at a pig head. Well, technically it's half a pig head. How do you get people intrigued and not turned off by the idea of eating a face? We really didn't care about that. That dish is very punk rock. We want the people that are adventurous and we want that clientele here. If it offends some people or people aren't interested in it, um, they don't have to order it. We'll go back to Chef Connor soon. But first, an appetizer prepared by executive chef Peter. Carpaccio. First of all, what's carpaccio mean? Carpaccio is traditionally like a very thinly shaved raw meat. And what are you using today? I'm using Wagyu beef tongue. I'm told you used to serve this dish elsewhere and it wasn't a big hit. Can you tell me what went wrong? I ran it at my last restaurant in California. I advertised it as a beef tongue carpaccio and I think Californians were just afraid to eat a different part of the cow. Until? Until I changed the name. And what did you change the name to? Wagyu carpaccio. This high-end Wagyu tongue undergoes a seven-day brine to maximize its flavors and tenderness. My guess is that people saw it, they're like, oh, okay, nice thin strips of beef. They ate it, they thought it was delicious, and then when you told them it was tongue, uh, they continued to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Mix chopped carrots, celery, onions, and chicken stock in a big pot. Throw in the tongue and let it simmer for three hours. So it was maybe just a little bit of a mental hurdle at first. Once they knew it was good and they were let in on the secret that it was tongue, no problem at all. Next, strip away the tongue membrane, like the memories of your ex-girlfriend. Once that's done, chill it for at least a day so it can firm up. Is this something that's on the menu now? It's gonna be actually coming out on the menu in the next couple weeks. And you're gonna call it beef tongue. I'm gonna call it Wagyu Carpaccio and see how it goes. <laughs> hey. Next, cut the 
tongue into more manageable chunks. Then the slicing. I'm slicing it super thick across the grain so it's nice and tender. Have you had a Wagyu tongue? I actually do have a Wagyu tongue sitting in my fridge right now. Really? Finally, the plating. We had a harissa emulsion, gives it a nice little heat. After that, this is a Calabrian pepper and caper salsa. These are uh, shallots that have been macerated with a little bit of yuzu juice, salt and sugar, crispy fried shallots, molten salt, and fresh herbs to brighten it up. To finish it off, we serve it with sourdough that's actually made at our sister restaurant down the street. And there you go. That's our cow tongue carpaccio. It is loaded with kind of strong flavors. He has something that's almost like an aioli on there. Maybe some sunflower seeds. Man, cilantro? Yeah, that's cilantro. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, is that a Spanish word? Yeah, it's actually coriander. Oh, so if I say it in America, I say coriander. <laughs> I'm gonna definitely try it first to get the flavors mm -hmm. by themselves. That's what I was thinking. There's that waggy right there. God, those are some beautiful slices. That Ready? smells incredible, yes. Cheers. Cheers. That is insane. It's so good. Do I, should I leave? Leave? Go where? And do what? Eat more. I don't know. I don't feel like I deserve this. <laughs> that has such strong flavors and textures mm -hmm. in it. You know, it almost tastes a little like some Thai curry. I like that there's some kick in there. And this is like more kick than your average American restaurant. Are you put on some bread? Yeah, come on now. Cheers. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's ultimate right there. It's smoky, it's spicy, the meat is so soft and tender. And then the bread itself, it's so crisp and the smoke from that char adds such another layer to it. So that was Kautung Carpaccio. And the patrons who are afraid of that will absolutely freak out about our next dish. What is the official name of this dish? Pighead carnitas. Carnitas literally translates to little meats. It's a traditional Mexican pork dish where the meat is braised and eaten usually in tacos. If you've tried it, you love it and you know. But Connor and his team are serving pig heads whole. That's big meat served to patrons who may not be used to seeing such things. I think it attracts the adventurous eater, the people that are seeking something more than just you know, filet. Let's get into the process. We get Berkshire pig heads already cut in half. They come in frozen, and that's actually part of the process because it helps the hydroscopic brine, and they brine for five days. Is hydroscopic another word for liquid? It just means something that like dissolves and can penetrate through osmosis. I hope I'm right on that. Like, I'm not a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't worry, we'll fact check it. We have the same fact checkers as Twitter. Before cooking can begin, the head must be cleaned. So now I'm just getting some of the little hairs off. Cut this off. Next, I'm gonna be taking out the glands. <sighs> These are all the glands that are in the cheeks. And this guy will uh, go into the steamer. We steam them for 12 hours at 180 degrees and softens the tissue. It's kind of like the slow braise, but with steam so that we don't lose a lot of the moisture. This is what it looks like after it's steamed for 12 hours. And now we're going to get it ready to roast. So first I take the sausage pricker. It's gonna create these little holes that the fat is gonna secrete and basically comb fee and crisp up the skin. I'm gonna spray the snout and the ear. The ear is thin and the snout is really thin. So we want it to cook a little slower. All right, this thing is ready to roast. They go into a 350 degree oven and every 20 minutes we're pulling them out, pricking them some more, rendering them. After three hours of roasting in the oven, it's ready to be served. Score the crispy skin and plate the head, along with fire-roasted red and green salsa, limes, pickled onion, radish salad, and fresh tortillas. I would consider this a shareable meal. Yeah, yeah. maybe, except there's only one eye, so. We're gonna have to play rock, paper, scissors <laughs> later for that. Well. I'm gonna go back here. I'm just gonna see if I can get, oh my gosh. It's gonna be like chicharron right here. Let's go for it. Huh? Mm-hmm. It's so crunchy. That is so crispy. It's crazy that that is just from the own fat from the pig rendering on itself. Here, so this is jowl? That's jowl right there. It looks so tender. It just like falls apart. The meat tastes so flavorful. The textures are so varied. The outside, it's bubbly and crunchy. You crunch into that. Then next, you got the meat and the fat. It's just so tender. It's such a great pork flavor. The best thing about head meat is the variations in fat to protein ratios. Also, the textures. Some parts are super fatty and other parts. I think it's gonna rip go, right go, off. Oh, rip it off. Oh, what? This white part is just cartilage. That's what gives the ear its shape. Cheers, pig Cheers, ear. Cheers, pig ear, cartilage. Now that tastes like chicharron. Mm-hmm. Thank you, pig. <laughs> oh, uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen. Here is the orbital socket. This is what a lot of MMA fighters break. Oh my god. And that right there is the whole eye. All right, you know what? You're a guest here. I think you should have it. 
She really likes to enjoy the eyeball. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, that's actually so, so good. Not too gelatinous, still have the meaty texture from pulling it out underneath. And now you've seen everything this pig has seen. I'm living its life. No, that's so bad. Carnitas, usually eaten inside a corn tortilla. Time to wrap it up. I'm gonna grab a tortilla. So <laughs> there's some really fatty meat in here. And so you'll put some of that in there? Oh yeah, because you kind of get some texture going on. Wow, you're getting snout skin. I am. This is gorgeous. The salsa and the onion and the lime is the perfect construct for a taco. You got your heat, you got your acid, you got your crunch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's a delicious taco. Carnitas are very fatty usually, but that lime really helps cut through it. It's so good. It couldn't be more tender, juicy, soft. This was excellent. This is amazing. Wait, oh, I forgot no. to even show this side. Is that, that a tongue? Section. <gasps> Holy cow. We've had a little bit of everything, yeah. and then a surprise at the end. It actually has a tongue once you give it a little bit of a flip. Give it a little bit of a dip. Yeah, yeah, dip it. Ready? Yeah, let's go. Wow. Oh my gosh, I like this so much. This might be my new favorite taco. Mm -hmm. Your taste buds are tasting its taste buds. Full circle right here. Circle of life. It's super creative. I like that the chefs were just going for something that pleased them. These guys didn't go, hey guys, would uh, pig face, would that be okay if we did that? <laughs> no, they just yeah. did it because it made them happy and creatively satisfied them. If you want to make something, you put it out there and sell it that this is going to be good and people are going to like it, then people will like it. Absolutely. Do you think they have takeout containers? <laughs> I hope so. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. Imagine your head being roasted and all it amounts to is lunch for someone. Are we going dystopian with it again? Are we eating? Yeah, sorry, I like people? to get really dark. <laughs> yeah, I saw the episode the other day where y'all ate the testicles. Which one? <laughs> there were so many versions that we did where we tried to sous vide it, we tried to roast it, we tried to deep fry it. I just imagine a stack of crumpled up pig faces in the back <laughs> where you're like, not that one. We were taught as children that eating the brains make you smarter. Did that work out? I think I'm a genius. Okay. <laughs> well, wow. it seems to have affected your confidence more than anything. <laughs> salsa roja, salsa Salsa verde, limon. Would you on that? Limon. Oh, we have to put subtitles for everything. You <laughs> Is that a four-star hotel? Yeah, four-star. Very nice. Do you use their fitness room? Sometimes I'll get up there. You take the apron off? Every now and then. Okay. <laughs> Boom, guys, that is our video today. Oh my God, what a fun video. A huge thank you to Molly for joining me today. It's definitely been a blast. Oh my gosh, getting to eat all this awesome food, getting the eyeball is a great experience. There's an eyeball over there for you later. Oh yeah, that's, that's my snack for later. <laughs> I'm talking about this one. It's funny because it's really big. It's bigger than a normal eyeball. All right, then we can cut that in and people will think I can time travel. Guys, that is it for today. Follow Molly here on her Instagram to learn more about her in-home dining experiences. Come check us out. We love to serve multi-course meals in your home and I would love to feed y'all next. Guys, that is it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A peace. <laughs> All right, let's walk this way. Maybe we can find other heads. Fish head? Oh yeah. Let's get a fish head. I would so be down.